deliver it in the last ten seconds. Mr. Hubert, yes. ready to go? And I had three minutes to prepare. I just no. got that. Okay. Mr. Hubert, would you lead us in the pledge tonight? Not until we have anything. Really? No. Yes. Uh, I want you to honor uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, grant us the wisdom to make our every decision fair-minded and in the best interest for all its residents. And I'd like to ask everybody to please keep um, the uh, families of the uh, shooting in the uh, Naval Yard in D.C. in your prayers. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hey. Deputy Supervisor Villanova. Okay, so um, we're going to meeting. start with some presentations tonight, Mr. Nowanek. The meeting for September 16th. No. no. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's called order. So, uh, order. Can I, oh, yeah, let's call the meeting to order first. Thank you, uh, Councilwoman Collins. Thank you. Can I get a motion to bring the meeting to order? So moved. So, second. You beat okay. you to the point. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I can have it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye there we go. Okay. Um, can I get a, any comments on the min minutes from the meeting of August 27th? Make a motion to approve as written. Now, hold on. It oh. said, there's a notation sure. here that says Councilwoman Mendocino was absent, yet she has a motion down here. In the oh, well, that's wrong. <laughs> I thought I picked that up. thinking. Well, she's pretty good, but I think even Council <laughs> Mendocino would have a tough time Which doing Which resolution that. is that? Uh, that's about midway down on the first page. On the motion. Oh, okay. Of Council yeah, I, I, okay. Thank you. Collins. I'll agree to, oh, I wasn't here, so. Mm -hmm. Who was, so who was good it? Catch, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah catch there was you. a who good was catch. It? Um, it was supposed to be Councilman Collins, seconded by Councilperson Villanova, okay. for the minutes that were approved. Thank you. Okay, so Thank make you. a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Any second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Great. Comments from the public. Goldie? Are you here to tell us how good a job? <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh-oh. 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 First, I'm not happy that you're selling this building and you're moving out. I'm not happy about that at all. And there are a lot of people that are not happy about it also because they can't travel different to, to uh, 222 Grace Church Street for a meeting or for anything that goes on here that they have to be at. Uh, the assessor's office, the clerk's office. I mean, there are a lot of people that have been complaining about this whole thing. Um, I'd like to know uh, what... Uh, where are you going to hold these meetings? Where are you going to hold these meetings? Worcester. Where? At the village, where the same place they hold their their meetings. Where? 350 North Main 350 Street. 350 North Main Street, right. Say it again. 350 North Main Street. That's the, the police station. Yep. So you're going to hold these meetings at the police station. That's even going to be worse for those people when I have to tell them uh, what you just said. What is it going to do to our taxes? Dramatically reduce them. Huh? Reduce your taxes. It will reduce yeah. our taxes? Absolutely. That's the whole reason we're doing it. Okay. The other thing is, when you have courtroom trials at the police station, where are these poor people, especially the ones that come from other countries and don't speak the English language, okay, where are they going to park? It's going to cost them money to park over there and to have to pay a fine or have to go to court because there's no parking like you have here across the street. They don't have that. And there's not enough parking for any of those trials. How are you going to have that? I don't understand what's going to happen there. Goldie, don't confuse the nights, don't confuse the nights, the court night that Portchester has with the court night that the town of Rye has. The docket for Portchester on a regular basis is uh, very heavy, and they have a lot of cases that they hear on a regular That's basis. That's correct, and sometimes Down they the change the time, and then there's, but where do you park? 
Goldie. Everything is parking meters all over the place that people are going to have to pay. Parking meters to get to a trial? They should have paid their ticket before they had to go to the trial. No, even so the now, tickets. So now we Doesn't have matter. The town of Rye, when they hold court, is a lot lighter. And it actually will be a lot easier for them to park there. It won't be easy a, for them. It will be easier for you. It will be easier for the... Uh, for the uh, attorneys, but not easier for them, Stop. because the attorneys won't have Stop. to pay Stop anything, Paul, but no. they will have to pay extra. Stop picking up Paul. Well, Speak so I'm highly sorry. of you. You can say anything you want, but I know better. Okay. Thank you, Goldie. Any other, uh, any other comments, uh, questions from the audience? <coughs> Okay, well, we've got actually a very, very light agenda tonight. Um, in fact, we're going to really go straight to our reports. Um, as we have no resolutions, we've made a lot of our decisions already this year, and now we're just in the execution phase. Um, <clears throat> I don't see Mr. Markowitz here tonight, so we won't have a report from our assessor. Um, I don't see Mr. Burns, so we're he's on vacation. He's on vacation. Uh, so like the Honorable Mr. Mecca, would you give us your... Receiver of Taxes Report. This is actually a record. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> this is a record. I would, even I, I could do this record. I don't even know what to do yeah, with yeah, myself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I'll no, no. Honorable stay Supervisor uh, Carbon, members of the Town Council, good evening. Nick Mecca, 45 Alto Avenue. <laughs> Right now we are collecting the schools and last meeting I told everyone if you are responsible You should have a bill by now. There is no reason why you do not have your bill the payment is due by the 30th of September that's the first half if you don't have a bill, please call We're also working very closely with mr. Noto. We have kicked in the in rem procedures there are 20 Parcels on the list of which three have already it was more than that because some have redeemed already And there are three that have come forward That are going to produce the money in the next few days, which will stay the in rem proceedings So we will so that leaves it with 17 on the list the 17 Paul roughly well, no, I think we started with 20 something and 27 some, yes. Yeah, uh, some have already paid yes um, I think six paid, right? So we're down. Yeah, up top. I think I filed at 21, and then since since I filed a week ago, two people have come in and, and offered to pay. So yeah, well, well, this is a lighter year than past years. Yes. Sure, yeah. And what um, <coughs> if people haven't paid? When do you begin to file for court proceedings? We filed already. We did, what, I mean, I started the in rem. We filed the petition. No, sorry. I mean, I, I mean, you December twentieth is the redemption date. Right. So that's we what file right after the first. So if the people haven't gotten their act together by December twentieth, right. In, in January, we would file the motion to take the property. Right. So okay. So would they have? A, I mean, that's the important thing. People have three months yeah. to resolve yeah. this problem. Right. And again, it's a horrifically expensive way for you to finance your property. Um, and uh, Mr. Mecca, thank you so much for all your help in alerting people. I mean, really, it's really informing people because these people own their homes outright, so there's no mortgage on their property, correct? Well, no, no, many Some have do. mortgages. Many mm -hmm. have mortgages. We've no, we notified and the banks. The banks are not, um, well, we just notified them, so I, this, okay. usually the banks will come in and, and, and pay. Okay. Yeah, so we'll we, have no, we, are, many, we have notified the banks. Many banks have removed the escrow accounts because the, they're getting high. Okay. You know, so the people have the mortgage but they have to pay their own taxes. And now oh, okay. when this proceeding takes place, if a bank finds this, because they're all notified. Right. The people are notified and the bank is notified okay. that has the mortgage. Many times they step in and pay. Sure. And that's why you see out there foreclosures by the banks because right. they redeemed that property for themselves because they don't want to lose it to the municipality. Sure, of course. So I think basically we're in pretty good condition. Excellent. I feel sorry for the people, but sure. it's three years, you know. Right. It's a long time that the town has been carrying this money. You know? Yeah, so. absolutely. Great. Thank you okay. so much, Mr. Thank Mike. you. Thank you. Uh, uh, town Clerk Vespia, any uh, report from you tonight? You have I the, submitted the report. You submitted the report. Uh, Terrific. Good. Um, Mr. Noto. No, uh, Mr. Mecca gave my report for me. He gave your report for you. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, uh, Mr. Nowotnik. 
Oh, well, actually, I would. I do have one yeah, item. Okay, please go. An ahead. item that I know you're going to want to hear. We have scheduled the closing for West William Street for October second. Oh, have we sold it. Well, we're closing on October second. Oh. Okay, and what was our? Uh, uh, so we're closing to take the property. No, no, West William Street. We're selling it to oh, the garage. Selling. Oh, West William. Oh, sorry, sorry, the garage. The garage. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're we're sorry, selling it on October second. I was thinking in I apologize. Yeah. yeah. So we're closing October second, yeah. and the monies will come in on October second. Yep. Yeah. Beautiful. Congratulations, work. And how are we coming with the other? Uh... Uh, no contract yet. They have not signed yet. Okay. All right. Talked to one of the owners. He's, they said they're ready to go. So I've I'll... heard that too, but I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Guess it's time to pull out the hammer. It is. I have to <laughs> unleash the supervisor on the registration. <laughs> uh -oh. A good cop, bad cop. Right. <laughs> uh, so back up it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, Mr. Nowatnik, how are we doing at Crawford Park? Uh, well, Crawford Park is uh, sort of alive and well. Uh, maintenance is uh, coming along nicely. Uh, the board will be happy to hear uh, all of the equipment, the excess equipment has been sold uh, and removed. Um, all of the stumps have been removed from the park. If you went up there uh, today, you would have seen that the gardens around the mansion have been uh, fully weeded and mulched. Uh, it absolutely looks gorgeous. Uh, however, there are some issues there, and that is, uh, one, the uh, gas leak is still unresolved. Uh, we have been working feverishly with Con Ed, uh, who uh, are trying to absolve themselves of any responsibility. Of course. Of course. Uh, and uh, we met with a number of plumbers. Uh, we expect to have costs uh, for you shortly, within the next week or so. Uh, and there are contingency plans that we may have to uh, deal with, one of which is the age of the gas installation, which comes from Ridge Street. It's approximately 1,200 feet to the mansion. Uh, depending on what Con Ed's ruling is, they may insist that before we uh, reactivate the gas service, uh, that that uh, piping has to be either replaced or remediated in some way. And there are some remediation uh, uh, options they have. So I, I just don't have enough information, but I will tell you uh, we are struggling because we don't have cooking facilities, we don't have heat, and we don't have hot water in the mansion as of right now. So that's a problem, obviously. That is a problem with our uh, various renters and so forth. Have we we are trying. Have we we are working it? around it because many caterers have the ability to bring in electric uh, cooking uh, capability, electric stoves, and so forth. Uh, but uh, have we alerted the people running the building? Uh, yes, yes. We uh, we're trying to be about a month ahead. Okay. Okay. Uh, so secondarily, what is the next? So, like, when do you expect to hear from them? Do we have a timeline of? At this well, point? I'm going to be oh, hearing from fun. the plumbers tomorrow uh, on some of the options. We're looking at a short repair option, meaning about 40 feet from the mansion, 40 feet from the kitchen entrance. Uh, if we are successful, because that's where the gas was was sensed by Con Ed. If that is successful, we can run a test. If the test uh, pressure test works, uh, we're good. Uh, and we're only out a few thousand dollars. Uh, if Con Ed says we have to replace all the piping down to Ridge Street, uh, we are talking uh, probably a bond issue because you're talking probably close to $100,000 when it's all said and done. Okay, so just keep us posted on that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, if you could pass that down. But before you, one other thing, were you going to get us some quotes on um, fire um, stairs to the upstairs of the mansion? Uh, or could you get us some quotes, even if they're ugly? I'd like to get a range of quotes. To, we did talk about that, to, I think. Uh, 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 okay, fine. We can, we can, we can update Spanish. We can update that, yes. Yeah. Yes, because I mean, Not uh, just the, the fancy stuff we're talking internally, but I'd like You to, wanted to look at something like, on the outside? Yeah, a low cost okay. option. option. Yeah. All right, uh, I just uh, passed out a little something that uh, I've been working with. Uh, We've received several complaints from uh, people, residents, if you will, along the Jennifer Lane side of uh, Crawford Park about the trees and the condition of the trees uh, in, in that area. Uh, we asked Michael Nowak uh, of Rye Brook, he's the arborist that Rye Brook has, uh, to help us walk through and identify the issues. 
Um, he's done that. He, in fact, if you can see the date. He just sent this to me the other day. Uh, so we will be m moving along on a project like this. Um, and uh, our budget, we think, is, is uh, well equipped to handle it. We had $21,000 in our budget for that. Uh, and we think that uh, we should be uh, fine with this. However, this only takes us to, I forget exactly what the address is, like 14 Jennifer Lane. So there are several more houses before we get to Wilton Road. Uh, we just can't afford to do all of the trees at one time, but uh, there are a number of trees there that need help. Uh, and uh, so Did I he not try. complete the list because he didn't have time, or is this... No, no, no. He's, it, it, it's just I stopped him because I know that we're running out of budget money. I mean, you know, there are trees. We went all the way to Wilton Road, and he identified other trees, and I said, well, look, you know, there's no way we're going to be able to do that this year with okay. this budget. So, uh, Are any of these trees an emergency situation? Uh, yes. The, the trees that I've indicated as remove okay. uh, are the serious emergencies. All right. Uh, you'll notice that I have a couple of weights over there where we're, you know, we're saying, okay, we know that we have to take these trees down, but they don't have to come down this year. They're not a danger to the uh, uh, property owner or to the right. park. So we're, we're trying to cut back as much as we can. The trimming of the trees uh, is something that has to be done because there are still many dead branches that are up there, you know, the, primarily a result of the storm. Could they inspect the trees beyond Wilton Road that might be an emergency removal situation? Beyond, no, we did not go past Wilton Road. Yeah, I would imagine that we probably should do a, a recap of that to determine if there are any that need remedial uh, removal. Oh, I can guarantee you there are. Uh, well, rather than remove some of these that might not be of an emergency situation, we should think about triaging some it. of those other ones. Yeah, triage it based on, you know, emergency need. Okay. We'll, we'll take a look at that. I'm, I'm just, we're, we're, this is a project that's coming. Right. Uh, it's going to be, you know, in the five ten thousand dollar range. We know that already, just from understanding I, what. I, I don't want to make the cut off some geographic line in the sand. Okay, I, I think we should inspect all the trees and do it based upon uh, need. Okay. Well, again, I'm looking at the budget and trying well, to understand yeah, I, I, how far I can go. I, I, just, we don't want I think them. the thing is what Councilman Neuris is saying, which makes sense to me as well, is. Shouldn't you inventory all of them and then prioritize which are at greatest exactly. risk? Okay. In other words, because it, 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 it sounds like, the, the way you've presented it, it sounds like it's a little bit arbitrary. You've gone as far as you believe you can afford, but if there's... It's going to be worse if something if, bad if happens. I, if I could just go back to the earlier meeting, Rytown Park, they identified that they have 331 trees. Well, that's... Yeah, that's I, 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 I'm just going to say that for us to be able to go through all of Crawford to try and identify all of those trees, we are talking about a, a substantial time to get that done. Oh, well, I think the... It's the, just the trees that border houses right, along the, the right, park. Right, right. So the balance, the balance that, Bishop, you have right. is to... These trees here are of concern because of the property owners and right. the interaction with Mr. Nowak. That's correct. Okay. Then you have the, pro the trees that are on our property that uh, Councilman Norris is talking about that, that should be inventoried as well. Mm -hmm. So obviously you understand what, what we've gone through in the past yep. uh, over at Rytown Park. I think we did it at Crawford Park also. Yes, we did. Um, so we, 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 did, uh, we did some uh, remedial work right. uh, with the trees. And so just continue down that path. And make sure that, uh, you know, regardless of where the tree is hanging, whether it's Rytown uh, yeah. property okay. or Rybrook property, we get that done. Beautiful. Okay. Alrighty. Anything else? I just have one thing sure. on, on Crawford Park, the, uh, the revenue. Um, just looking at the year-to-date numbers, looks like we're down about 43% vis-a-vis last year. Uh, okay. I'm just wondering yeah, if the gas leak and everything, yeah. you know, if you have any idea. Of, if that that really, we've only had one cancellation as a result of this. That's not really the issue. Uh, I think I brought it up in prior meetings. The real issue is that uh, the village of Rye Brook has raised the prices on the police coverage for the alcohol policy. Uh, as a result, the price of a Crawford Park event with alcohol has now gone over $1,000. Okay, and that 
pricing pressure has reduced our uh, mansion activity. We don't see a problem with the pavilions. The pavilions have been booked solid. Uh, they are outdoors, and the pricing structure there is much, much lower. Mm -hmm. can I, can I, that's actually uh, quite a good question. If we look at our numbers, mm -hmm. the mansion's gone from 86000 to 21000 Is this like for like the same number of months? Yeah. So what... Um, and we've gone from 180 events to 22. Wait, we've talked about wait, wait, this wait. several No, no, we have. I'm just saying, but, yeah, it, it, but I, you know, I'm just, as we look forward, as, well, the real question I have is we get ready to budget for, am I, first of all, let me just see if I'm understanding the numbers right. Yeah. If I look at 2010. Okay. We had 180 events as of, what's this, these are through what, through what month, September? Or well, no, August? no, this is uh, August. The, each month is separate. You know, you're looking at June, July, and August. All right, the year-to-dates are not comparable. The year-to-date uh, for 2013 is only through August. The year-to-dates for the uh, 10, 11, and 12 are the full 12 months. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, but, uh, generally, you try and present like for like. But anyway, the even, uh, and I presume our number of events fall off in the last four months of the year, right? So, uh, somewhat, yes. Yeah, the so, pavilion, the outdoor events start to slow down. And, uh, so we the, had 52 events at the mansion last year. It looks like we're on track for 40 events this year. Yep. And we were at 180 events in 2010. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess, and I know we talked about this, I think we became more rigorous with our policy. Right. And we started charging more. And we also, right, we started charging more, and at the same time, we also cut back on Sunday night parties. Yeah, but I, I think, well, I'm just as we go into next year's budget season, mm -hmm. and as we incur, in, increase in expenditure at Crawford Park, I think we want to re-examine and do some analysis here, because we're sort of cutting our nose to spite our face here. Well, part of that analysis needs to also take into consideration the use that's happening there now where we're not being compensated. Yes. Okay. That's so correct. The, the, so let's just say that that differential yeah. Yeah, yeah. is, uh, you know, there are entities that are using Crawford Park uh, that are not paying the town of Rye a fair share. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that needs to be addressed as well. Yeah. Uh, as so because it's easy to turn around and say, okay, well, great, uh, you know, let's let's flip it around what we do and and uh, start increasing activity. But there's activity that's there already. Right. It's not. It's not. It's not. Uh, yeah. It's not compensated. We're not compensated. We're not compensated. Right. So that's. I well, think I think that's, that's an excellent point, Deputy Supervisor Villanova. Could you, Mr. Arcaro, and Mr. Nowatnik, work on a report for us? Really, you know, we've gone from one hundred nine thousand dollars to what it was going to be fifty, sixty this year. So we really lost fifty, sixty thousand mm. dollars. And you know, you know, we're uh, when I look at our budget, as we started to pull together numbers for this year, you know, we're uh, having let seven employees go, which we all know was a gut wrenching decision. I know for the whole board, we're still at a three hundred thousand dollar, two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollar deficit, and uh, you know, uh, you know, we don't want to eat into our fund balance with that kind of deficit every year. So we know going in that we need to, you know, raise revenues and decrease costs. So it seems to me there's some potential here to generate incremental revenues in Crawford Park. Um, you know, and so I'd just like to review, one, what Deputy Supervisor Villanova is, the, 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 the effectively people using the park without compensating, so wear and tear in the park that's not properly compensated. And two... You know, we have a track record here where we, 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 you know, as a result of our policies, we've significantly reduced usage of the Crawford Mansion. And I think we should examine, is it pricing, is it... Uh, one is suggestion it? I would like to make is um, also maybe we need to do some investigation and comparison to some other potential places that people rent when they're looking at Crawford and see what the amenities are like and the price point and see what sort of like the competition, for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. yep. is where their price point is at and their offerings and right. see where we are and how we fit into that. That's kind of where we were mm -hmm. just before you were elected. Mm -hmm. That's where we were, uh, and that's what brought us to this current policy mm -hmm. with current, current pricing structure. Uh, we took into consideration Basilopo Center, mm -hmm. and we went all the way around our, our area here and into Greenwich. Mm -hmm. 
And so that that's where we came with our price okay. structure. Okay. So well, I think just keep, it doesn't keep mean up that with we can't it. Look at well, it again. Yeah, I think no, it's no, an it's easy a good thing. Suggestion. A couple phone calls take a few minutes. Sure. And no, and, uh, but that's, to, let's have a nice comprehensive memo or presentation. Yeah. I really don't okay. care. That takes into account uh, uh, your Deputy Supervisor Villas and Villanova is absolutely correct, but there's no reason we shouldn't update. Those well, we just want to make sure and, that and, we're, and we're, we're we're in line with what yeah. we're asking from people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. it is a significant amount of money, and it's not you know it, it does need some updating there. We know that. Absolutely. Um, in terms of Crawford Park, I know you had said you had these complaints regarding the trees. Have we had any other complaints? To be frank with you, not really. We've uh, we did have a couple of noise complaints for some of the larger events that we had. Uh, we had a couple of uh, festivals there, right, if you will, uh, ethnic festivals. Um, but uh, I think that was limited to just as far as maintenance and things like that. Though, have we gotten any feedback? Okay. The feedback we've gotten so far has been positive, as in in general. Um, you now, if you you have to go look and 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 see. Uh, but uh, Greenway, Greenway has been doing a good job. People comment us all the time. The the day after they mow the lawn, how nice it looks and and so forth. Uh, I do. I see emails every now and then. With, this needs cutting. Yeah. That needs right. I mean, I, right. it's not that we're not. It's not like we're complaint free. I, I think that I ask they, for a reason. I mean, I've yeah. heard certain oh, sure, things. Sure. Oh, sure, yeah, sure. Well, was, just not everybody's always thrilled with our decision. So, you know, you like take what it with well, Oh, yeah. people aren't happy with the maintenance, but nothing specific. And that's why I asked if there was something specific that we've well, been Well, let's look. We like specific and I, I welcome. I welcome the public. I'll take this opportunity to say that it, yeah. if you do notice something, I hope you all know this board is very open to receiving Absolutely. any uh, things you might notice in our absence or complaints you may have so that we can address them properly. Yeah, we usually try and address them, you know. Yes. Yeah, most yeah we're, we're, we're trying to stay on very, top of it, and, and we're responsive. If people right. get in touch with us, we will get back to them uh, with with solutions, Great. hopefully. No, I'm glad to hear that, and I, I expected that was the answer. So Beautiful. Just wanted to clarify. Great. Thank All you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Nowotnik. Uh, Mr. DiCrescenzo, Superintendent of Highways. Mr. Superintendent of Highways. <laughs> Usually, yeah, you we're well into the evening by the time you come up here. I mean, well, you're, I, I'm, you're in the heady 8.30 hour here. That's Let's it. This is very, very early. <laughs> very early. Did everybody look at the report? Yep. Do you have any questions? It just looks like business as usual. Yeah, pretty the, straightforward. The, the, yeah. Big, the big project, Jefferson Avenue, is moving along. It's somewhat on schedule, you know, taking into consideration all the weather and all the problems they've had. And... Um, do we re or aren't we supposed to be uh, renewing that bond? Do we know if we renewed that bond? Uh, yes, the, the uh, uh, bond anticipation note. Um, uh, Dave and I have spoken about it, um, and that becomes almost like an automatic flip at the moment, unless the council decides that they want to go long term. And when do we make that decision? The, well, thought, I think you have to make that decision in November. Oh, not tonight. Not tonight. Okay. All right. Great. And we're um, going to re-notice the maintenance project on the Otter Creek uh, Bridge. Um, Otterman Kirby is just uh, readjusting the time frame for the uh, return on the uh, bids once they go out. So uh, those will be noticed shortly, and that project should be done before the end of the season this year. And that bridge will be completely taken care of. And uh, he's going to notify the DOT of the repairs, so the uh, they're all uh, up to date on the work that's been done on the bridge. Wonderful. And that's about it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Crescenzo. Uh, comments from council people. Uh, Councilman Collins, would you just give uh, our board an update on um, the Rye Town Capital Committee and what what the status is of that? Sure. Um, the Rye Town Park Capital Planning Committee has uh, been meeting regularly and we've been reviewing RFPs to engage with a uh, consulting and planning firm to help us uh, take this project to the next level. Um, just remind the audience and the board what the project is. The project is that we're looking to engage with a uh, potentially a potentially private public partnership a solution for the community that will help uh, restore Rye Town Park and allow us to use it to the best of its facility. It is a gem. It's a gem in our community, and the town just we we need some help, 
and we don't have the money to do it without some form of solution that I believe is going to uh, be found in in the public sector somehow, whether it be community-based or corporation-based, we have no idea. And that's why we're looking to engage a planning and consulting firm to help us make that decision and explore options and explore the impact it would have on the local community, anywhere from a traffic decision to a commerce decision. But I want to assure everyone that the goal is to improve Rytown Park for all its citizens, not to take away any of the amenities or limit any of the access to it. But right now there's buildings at that park that can't even be used by the public, let alone you know, by, by a private sector solution. So we're not really sure what it's going to look like, but the public will be involved in that process. And the next step is really to engage with a, a, a firm that can help us figure out what that solution might look like and how to engage the public in that process. So right now we um, vetted several uh, consulting companies and we have made a recommendation for uh, one, potentially two people for the commission to further talks with. And that's where we are at. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for your hard work as our representative on the Right Town Capital Committee. Second of all, I want to thank the Right Town Capital Committee for all your hard work. Uh, just so everybody knows, uh, they've been meeting on numerous occasions, and uh, particularly uh, the heads of the committee, Dan Tartaglia, Christina Bircher, have been working very hard with uh, Councilwoman mm -hmm. Collins, our other uh, Mayor capital Feinstein. committee, Mayor yeah. Feinstein. Um, uh, what's the woman's um, name from uh, Martha McCarthy? That's right. Yes, uh, McCarthy. Uh, and um, so we want to thank them for all the hard work. And tonight, what we dis uh, the capital committee has recommended a planner for us to work with. And uh, the board may remember we were looking to have bids in by the end of November, middle of November. We're now very likely going to push that process back because the process really hasn't generated a whole lot of interest at this point. Basically, we tried to do it on our own because you should try and do it on your own, but we just couldn't cast a wide enough net. We need a professional who really knows how to get to the right type of people, the people who have experience in, in engagements such as this. That's exactly right. And so uh, the, the Right Time Capital Committee has recommended a firm with which we're going to hope to work. Um, there's three commission members that have been detached that will be meeting with the number one recommended vendor. The second place vendor has been invited to, uh, we, we have a $20,000 threshold to re-bid uh, the work uh, coming under the threshold. If that second bidder comes in at that lower rate, then we will interview that second bidder as well. Uh, and um, so there's three members from the commission that are going to be meeting with one or two vendors uh, to finalize this. The capital committee uh, members are invited, and I wanted to invite members from this board if they wanted to participate as well. Obviously, Councilman Collins, if you're available, uh, you have two invites, one from the committee and one from here. <laughs> well, I better accept one of them then, huh? <laughs> uh, but if uh, other members of the commission, uh, our, our board, wanted to be participating in that process, uh, you know, please let me know and and uh, and we'll evolve you. Uh, yeah, one, if you could just include us on the, on the right. email. It'll be good. good. Fantastic. Great. Well, thanks again for um, your work. Anything else? Yep. One more quick comment, please. and I would just like to say that I do agree with Goldie that parking will be slightly more annoying when we move to Main Street. However, I do want to say that the benefit to that inconvenience should hopefully outweigh, you know, that will outweigh the inconvenience. You know, I agree that we're blessed here to have a parking lot. It's a unique situation. I'm glad that we'll have one at Grace Church Street. But when it does come to town meetings, we do have the inconvenience of having to park on Main sure, Street. Sure, yeah, just to be clear. But I do want to acknowledge that she is not wrong. In right. That. Well, thank you for that. Now, just to be clear, parking will improve at 222 Grace Church right. Street, and you're absolutely correct. Yes, I agree. It will not be as good at the at the courts, uh, but, but thank you for that. Everything has a, a price, exactly. you know. Beautiful. Uh, Councilman Nayars? Uh, no comment. Uh, Deputy Supervisor Villanova? Oh, yeah. First, I just want to uh, report on the uh, move to 222. Oh, please, uh, yeah. We had, uh, uh, Bishop and I had a, a great meeting with uh, the architect and with uh, uh, Chris Amy and Chris Steers and Mayor Pagano. The uh, the primary space, uh, there's no question about it. We're, we're in great shape there going forward. Uh, there are two uh, spaces that we're weighing the benefits. Obviously, we want to make sure that we have... Uh, 
we have ample space for uh, for staffing, uh, for uh, for desk space, for storage, and um, there's a there's a little bit of a, a moving target uh, with regards to uh, the second part of the space and and um, quite simply and what I'll do, Bishop, I think it's a good time. We'll put a report together and email it out so we can have that available, uh, and we want to. Um, uh, make sure that we maximize our dollars there and get the best space that we can. And um, we're, we're going to know probably by next week uh, whether or not there's going to be any kind of a change. But we are in uh, great shape, and uh, we're um, we're still. I, I feel that we're still on on track for uh, for that beginning of the year move. Uh, but uh, we're going to have to pull the trigger uh, awfully soon. Uh, to make that happen. Now, uh, when do we expect to get the estimate of the cost uh, of the build-up from the architect? I'm, I'm expecting in two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. okay, but long before our next meeting. Long before our next meeting. Okay, so what, what I'd like to do, if at all possible, and if we get it in time, what, what, if we could uh, coordinate with the village of Porchester meetings, uh, what I'd ideally I'd love to be uh, at the next uh, was it October twenty first the next meeting October fifteenth October fifteenth okay well October fifteenth I would love to uh, approve the lease and the sale uh, of this building uh, sorry building but the, approve the, the lease and the sale of, okay. of the building you already approved the sale well so we, so we don't have to bring that back to the board no, so it's just, done oh, okay yeah. so okay but if you don't need the lease in so, place to finalize the sale so you can close. You can close on the sale anytime, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, good. But we do need to approve the lease. Right. So, okay. So, ideally, good. Thank you. That's Thank you, uh, Town Attorney Noto. So, well, I'd still like to close. Uh, you, you're today, you you've announced our good news that we're closing on the garage tonight. Yeah, that's on October 2nd. And if we could get the other one, uh, do we well, announce not, it to the public? They don't want to close until November. Well, I know what they want. But uh, the, what the Deputy Supervisor Villanova, he's the he's the tough cop. I'm the easy guy. <laughs> uh, but we, you know, I, I I talked to uh, one of the the, right. the bidders, we and, and he, he didn't seem sooner. to think there was any problem. Okay. So if we could just remind them, and look, if at all possible, I'd like to be, uh, you know, getting everything the T's crossed, the I's dotted, the contracts, the money in, and 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 also, if at all possible, right. to have the lease. To, you know, really well, you're going to want to see the lease, which I'll get to you, uh, but the board members may have comments on the lease. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so that's what I'm saying. So we'll circulate the lease, get it to the board. As soon as I get that it. number from the architect to plug right. in. So the, the, just to be clear, the lease is clear, as I understand it. $67,500. Yeah. Correct. We're, we're finalizing the actual space allocated. Uh, we're finalizing that. We have an option on another space, as I understand Correct. it, the one yeah. we don't take. That's in the lease. The, all the terms are effectively uh, been determined. The only thing we're waiting for is Our the build-out estimate. estimate. Correct. And and the build-out that is permanent Correct. will be amortized over time. Exactly. So we need that estimate of the permanent build-out to finalize the lease. So as soon as we get that number, we're really ready to, to Right. To, to and close. I just want to let the public and let, let the board members know that if Bishop and I just walked in, we walked through and said, okay, great, and we walked out, uh, we would not have done our job. And uh, so we, we've really, I really went headstrong into that space there. And the, the staff from the village of Porchester will tell you, we were meeting there 7.30 in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, you know, for hours on end. Wow. And uh, so it's been, a, it's been a great exercise, but also the due diligence has been had. Uh -huh. And I'm confident that when the decision, when we come back with our final report, um, you're not going to get, you may get better if you go someplace else but you're not going to get any better for what we have to work with. So I want to let you know that. Well, I want to well, thank, thank you. Yeah, I want, exactly. I want to thank Deputy Supervisor Vanova, Mr. Nowatnik, for the hard work and effort you're putting into into this move. I know you, I've, I've seen the emails, and I know you're spending a lot of time and effort. And usually starting at like 7. I used to say, I thought it was 7 in the morning, 7.30. <laughs> I think you usually start at 7 a.m. So thank you so much. Thank you for our counterparts at the Village of Porchester. Uh, for their assistance as well. Now, one other issue. Uh, Town Kirk Vespia, uh, uh, receiver of taxes, uh, Mr. Mecca, uh, I don't think it really applies to you, uh, Mr. Superintendent of Highways. Uh, we sent a memo around asking for storage needs. Mm -hmm. So if you could get back to us, what I really want to know is what are your storage needs, right? How much, what, 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 what do you need in terms of storage for day-to-day -day usage? Right. 
and what is long-term storage, right? Because we can use, we don't want to rent space that we don't need to rent, right? So if some of it's long-term and it can be put at Crawford Park in a way that's safe and, you know, we, we, we can put some of our records there now. So I'm just trying to get a sense of how big our storage needs as we finalize this. So we've uh, circulated email to each of the department heads. If you can get back to Mr. Nowotnik with your storage needs, uh, um, then we can, we then again, just thinking about day-to-day -day and then, right. you know, longer term. Um a bishop a memo this afternoon but Wonderful. i also spoke with greg or carol and we're going to meet and go over some things. beautiful great so just straighten all that out and get that going terrific very good and i uh, just want to remind everybody that uh this sunday the 22nd at 2 p.m is the westchester county fireman's parade here in portchester sunday uh, sunday, sunday. Mm -hmm. I, I want to uh thank uh chief uh, bill barnes chief de vittorio pete messina mike stonehouse uh those are key members of the committee that have been working on that, and uh, it's been uh, what time months, is it? two o'clock step off. Where does it start off? Uh, up on the top of Westchester Avenue. Is and, that parade right down Westchester Avenue? Yes, correct. All the way down onto uh, Midland. I think Midland. Right, yeah. uh, so I want to thank uh, those guys and the uh, and the firefighters from Reliance Edge and Hose and all the Portchester firemen that are working uh, to make this a great success. They're having their meeting and their, uh, and their dinner on Thursday night. And uh, the town of Rye will be uh, presenting a proclamation to them at that time. Joe, you're going to talk about this. Well, you, right? you can kick it off. But before you get to yep. the, the Thursday night, um, now I know I can't make it, and I know you can't make it, right? Yeah, well, I'm trying to see if I can squeeze a schedule out where I okay. can do that. All right, well, good. I'll definitely communicate with everybody. All right, wonderful. Because if you can, I mean, they're Councilman New York or Councilman Collins, if they, if they had the time, if, we, if you can't be there. Perfect. Uh, um, but I think as our firemen... I'll do my best. That would be great. It's also a zoning board night, so... I, I know, guess. exactly. <laughs> two places at the same Sometimes time. Sometimes you got too many hats on. I'm solving the problems in Syria on Thursday night, otherwise I'd be there. I believe that. <laughs> Are they aware of that? Uh, Syria does not. The, President Obama's been in touch with me, and I've, I've got some ideas. Uh, Monday, September 30th, and uh, uh, Supervisor Carvin will uh, finish this off, but uh, Monday, September 30th at 7 p.m. at the Capitol Theater, uh, the flashbacks, uh, that original musical history of the town of Rye, um, will be... Uh, will be uh, at the Capitol Theater, and uh, general admission is $25, and that's uh, the focus there is for uh, uh, the, the Town of Rye fourth grade students as part of their project. You'll see outside 10 Pearl Street is a large sign, and uh, sponsored by the, uh, uh, sponsored by the uh, Chamber of Commerce, I spoke with uh, Ken Manning, and it's the World of Great Food, International Cuisine Festival in Port Chester and Rye Brook. And it's the first, interna first annual International Cuisine Festival. It's going to be Saturday, October 5th, uh, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Knights of Columbus. It's $15 for adults, $10 uh, for kids under 12. So uh, I uh, ask everybody to attend. And I just want to talk about our move to uh, 222. And, and I agree with, uh, with everything that's been said for the most part. And uh, the, believe me, the benefits to the community, uh, both from the logistics, the day-to-day, -day, the, the way that you interact with the town, and then interact with the village and the state, uh, is going to be far greater, far easier. And, uh, and then from the, the other perspective is that this, is good, this move here is going to be reducing the expenditures that the town of Rye is going to have to incur in the short term and the long term. So it's going to reduce your taxes. Um, so that's a, that's a great thing, and we can't we can't forget about that. The move is important, but the move is going to be great for the community. And if anyone has any question about how this move is going to happen and how it's going to affect you, or how it's going to help you, or help the community, take the opportunity to pick up the phone and call the supervisor's office. Come to a meeting. Stop one of us. We'd be more than happy to uh, talk to you. So that being said, Mr. Supervisor. Thank you, Deputy Supervisor Milanova. Well, just one last comment on that. Again, you know, we're, I'm very excited about it because I think uh, certainly the quality of the government as a broadly, broadly speaking improves. Um, you know, you, you, 222 Grace Church has a far better parking lot. Secondly, it's a one-stop government center. Um, we have ourselves, the Village of Port Chester, State Assemblyman uh, Otis, and State Senator Latimer are all in the, the same place. So I think it works on a number of different fronts. But look, I really wanted to talk to you tonight about this flashbacks. Flashbacks. 
Uh, for those of you who remember, we celebrated 350 years of the town of Wright. Remember that, uh, Town Clerk Vespi, our, our, our record keeper, uh, in 2010. And um, uh, my old English teacher, Camille Lennon, and her sister, Donna Carberry, created an original play for that moment and that event. And, um, you know, one of the things we're trying to do, uh, and the, well, Camille Lennon's trying to do with Donna Carberry is work with the school system. And one of our themes here is to try and uh, bring the schools and the municipalities closer together to work closer together. So uh, Camille Lennon and Donna Carberry are, want to provide our fourth and fifth graders who are studying local history mm -hmm. in their classrooms an opportunity to see this play. So she's going to put on the play for free at 10.15 for fourth graders. So for fourth graders from the whole of the ride town, they will have a free production at our newly renovated Capitol Theater. How about that, Honorable Mr. Mackey? Capitol Theater. Mm -hmm. 350 years, now 352, the 353 years of history, mm -hmm. all embodied in this one absolutely fantastic play. Now, how do we finance that? Well, we finance it with a spectacular one-time performance that's a must See, a must-attend for anybody here in Port Chester on September 30, Mr. Hubert. And we're looking for a big turnout. I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear you in London. Excuse September 30th. You can still you can still fund twenty-five dollars. That this is a this a Broadway play doesn't begin to compare with this. It takes us right from the Indians, Greenwich, right, Peningo. You're going to learn the names of your streets, the, the Ward's Castle. Remember Ward's Castle? Yeah. All these Port Chester hallmarks in the newly renovated Capitol Theater. My goodness. For $25, you want to buy two tickets. Okay. I think we might have a little refreshments afterwards and, 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 and that kind of thing. But really, spread the word. September, Monday, September 30th, 7 p.m. Tell your friends it's an original play. I won't give any of the secrets away, but it is absolutely fantastic, I can tell you. And the great thing is the age of the cast ranges from 70 to 80. If you want to see a model American community, you're going to see it on that stage Monday, September 30th at 7 p.m. So be there or be square. Group field trip. I'd like to make a motion that uh, we uh, go into executive session. session to discuss personnel history of personnel a particular history. employee. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, perfect. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, we don't need to close the other. Well, I can't close it.